Many people think that intelligence is fixed at birth, but to confirm whether this is true, first we must decide what we mean by intelligence. This is a controversial issue that is continually studied. What most scientists agree now could also change in the future. Scientists currently agree that intelligence is not just a trait like hair color or height, and it's not just about how many things we know and academic skill or how good we are at tests. According to scientist Linda Godfredson, intelligence is a very general me mental capability that, among other things, involves the ability to reason, plan, solve problems, think abstractly, comprehend complex ideas, learn quickly, and learn from experience. So it's not just about rote knowledge, but the ability to catch on, figure things out, and understand our surroundings. It's about the ability to gather knowledge, form strategies, be creative, and solve problems. But are we born with this capacity, or can it increase or decrease in accordance with our efforts and environment? This is a famous debate known as nature versus nurture. The nature side says we are pre-wired for intelligence and adaptability. Our capacities are genetic and we are inherently different from the day we're born. Intelligence is a matter of biological factors that we inherit from our parents. The nurture side says we are all born the same, with minds like a blank slate, to be filled in with intelligence and other capacities. Therefore, intelligence is due to external factors like environment and exposure to others. Of course, intelligence could also be a combination of both. That's what today's experts say. According to Robert Plowman, when it comes to in intelligence, genes make a substantial difference, but they are not the whole story. Aspects of intelligence can come from our parents, and intelligence is considered by some to be highly heritable, but genetics alone don't account for achievement. If genetics account for 20% to 50% of all differences in intelligence among us, as many scientists agree, a large part of intelligence remains that is not caused by genetic differences. These other external factors can include childhood health and nutrition, exercise, where we live, our parents' education, and even family income. Unfortunately, not all of these environmental factors make the playing field any more level, but they do mean we're not stuck with the intelligence we're born with. There's more to the story as well. Not only is our intelligence a combination of many different factors, but genetic influence on our intelligence itself can change over the course of our lives. According to Plowman, genetic influence on measured intelligence appears to increase over time. This could be because we seek experiences that match our genetic propensities and therefore make those propensities stronger over the course of our lives. For example, someone with a genetic predisposition for intelligence, something that could cause them to seek out and enjoy new and enriching experiences, will have more enriching experiences, and that genetic predisposition will therefore become stronger. The opposite could occur too. So external factors pronounce genetics, and our genetics can cause us to seek out these external factors. Furthermore, students' beliefs about these topics are one of those external factors that can affect outcomes. Some scientists believe that students' mindsets over whether intelligence can grow or not itself affects intelligence. Students who believe intelligence is fixed at birth may not do as well as those who believe that intelligence can grow. The belief fulfills itself. Our own ideas about intelligence can affect how we learn. This can be harmful to students with a fixed view of intelligence who might not take risks in order to avoid making mistakes. Meanwhile, those who believe in ex an, an expandable or growth mindset may want to challenge themselves to increase their abilities. So don't believe this myth. Is intelligence fixed at birth? No, this myth is busted.